Welcome to the Dan Clarence Gomez Show. I'm your host, Dan Clarence Gomez, and my guest is Gavet Owen, a uh, sound designer. In He is working in Broadway and West End. Hello, Garrett. Welcome to my podcast. Hey, John. Thank you for having me. And here is the first question. Who is Garrett Owen? Can you tell me and our listeners about yourself? Well, I do the... I design the sound systems for Broadway and West End musicals. So... I work out what speakers we need. I work out what microphones, what mixing desks. Um, and then I take responsibility for installing it all in the theater for all the different shows. And then I actually create the sound that the audience hear. So uh, me and my team are responsible for the mixing of the orchestra, the mixing of the vocals. Um, we do things like reverberation, which is effects that make the... Uh, make the voices sound nicer. We make sound effects, you know, we need a car or a gun shot or a, or a thunderclap, you know, whatever the, whatever the show needs in order to sell, sell the story. Um, and we do that mainly in, in West End London theatres and New York Broadway theatres, but we also do shows in Germany and Vienna, Spain, Italy, France. Um, we're actually working on a show at the moment in India. So, yeah, kind of all over the place. That's me professionally. How to become a sound designer? Well, that's a tricky question, John. I'm not going to lie to you. That is a tricky one. Um, it's <laughs> how to become a sound designer. Well, I mean, I can only comment from the point of view of musical theatre. I can't really, because there's other types of sound designer as well, and I can't really um, comment on how you become a sound designer for a movie, for example. Um, but in theatre, what happens usually is it, it's one of those progressive things where you start at the bottom and you work your way up. So a lot of people start as what's called a dep and a dep is somebody who comes in and works on the show and runs uh, and covers for people who are on holiday or people who are sick and that uh, those deps they uh, they usually just look after the radio mics so they do they help with the fitting of the radio mics um, on the cast on the cast members the members of the show and um, you kind of so, so you come in as a dep and then if you do a good job as a dep, you get a bit of a reputation and people say, oh, you know, I'm looking for a dep. And they say, so, oh, so-and-so, we had him in last week. She, she was really good. And um, so then you get to do more and more depping. And then when somebody leaves a show, usually what happens is that the existing show crew, they move up. So like the deputy head of sound, if the head of sound is leaving, then the deputy head of sound might take over and they'll be looking for a new deputy head of sound. And usually they look to the people who've been depping for them. They say, you know what? She was really good. Let's offer her a full-time job. So then you end up going from dep to being a full-time member of the sound team on a show. And again, you kind of work your way up and you do that for a while. And then maybe you end up working on a, a successful show that's doing more productions around the world. And then maybe the sound designer will ask you, uh, okay, um, would you like to come and be the associate sound designer? Because you were the person mixing the show, the original version of the show. Would you like to come and be the associate sound designer for the show in a different country? So you end up becoming an associate sound designer and you end up opening different versions of this show. And then once you're an associate sound designer, you do that for a while. And um, that's basically the, the person who helps the designer put on the shows. And then often what happens is that the designer that you're working with will be offered a show that they can't do or they don't want to do or they're unavailable or, or, or they or the people paying for the show don't have enough money. And um, they'll say to the associate, hey, listen, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. Will, will you do it? So then they become a designer. They end up, so they're doing a bit of associate work, but they're also doing their own design work. And then from there, 
you know, they do a bit more design work, a bit more design work. I think the, um, I think the best way to say it, John, is it is not a quick and easy thing to do. It is not, uh, it took me, um, it took me 10 years to be even calling myself a sound designer. And I think it probably took me 15 years before I was actually really a sound designer. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just a lot of hard work. What is the life of being a sound designer in West End and Broadway? What is the life? Well, the li- what is the life? Well, the interesting thing is, is that I think a lot of people think that it must be a lot of glamour and parties and going to bars. And the reality is it's a lot of sitting in a dark room. There's an awful, awful lot of sitting in a dark room at, your, at a desk in front of a computer just sitting there waiting for something to happen. I mean, the amount of my life that I think I've spent waiting for people to rehearse how to get cast members and set on and off stage at the right time, the amount of time I've spent waiting for lighting, the amount of time I've spent watching people discuss a costume change or repeat the same thing 15 times that has nothing to do with me whatsoever. Uh, It's a lot of sitting around and waiting. And then suddenly it's busy and you're like, oh my God, okay, right. This is about sound, right? You know, you're crazy busy. And then all stop. And it's sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. Then suddenly it'll be crazy busy again. And we do that six days a week usually from nine o'clock in the morning till about 11 o'clock at night when we're creating a new show. And that is really, really hard work, especially considering that often you're away from home, you're away from family and you're away from your friends and you're just, you know, working in the theater. And so, you know, that can be pretty tough, but on the other hand, there are good sides to it as well. And the good sides are you earn quite a lot of money for doing that. So what you can do is you can work very hard for half the year. And then the other half of the year, you can, you earn, you've earned enough money to not have to work in that second half of the year. So you can go on lots of holidays. You can spend time at home with your family. And that's what I do. I work really, really hard for about half the year. And then I spend the other half of the year trying to spend as much time as I can with my friends and family. What? And there are lots of parties. It's worth saying, John, there are lots of parties and, you know, there's award shows and opening night parties and everyone gets dressed up in tuxedos and stuff. And then we do get to do that, but it's kind of like a, you know, a few times a year thing, not a, uh, not, not a nightly, uh, nightly party time. What is the best musicals in Broadway and West End that you work for a sound designer, what is the best musical? Well, for me, for, so for me, a good show is always about the music. Um, I think maybe because I started my career as a rock and roll sound engineer and then moved into theater, um, I think for me, it really is about the music. And yes, story and a nice set and good costumes and good dancing, these things are all important. But for me, it's about the music. And of course, the way that music sounds, because, you know, I'm a sound engineer, so of course that's what I'm going to worry about. And I think for me, the best show, the best shows I've worked on recently have been the ones with the best music. So for example, there's a musical in London, which we're just about to open on Broadway called Anne Juliet. And Anne Juliet is all the music of Max Martin. Now, the interesting thing is you won't have heard of Max Martin, but I bet if you Google him, you will find, you will suddenly realize, you know, hundreds of songs that he's written. He writes all of, he writes lots of songs for people like Britney Spears and Katy Perry. And, and, you know, he's, he's had like hundreds of number one hits. And, um, He's even written songs, written songs of Bon Jovi, stuff like that. So, you know, you've got, um, and, and the music for Anne Juliet is just fabulous. And actually, the show as a whole is absolutely brilliant. And then that's probably my favourite show from a music point of view in the West End. From a, uh, in the West End, however, we also have Back to the Future. And uh, anyone who's seen the Back to the Future 
movie will know quite uh, how epic that could be on stage. We've got a car that drives around. We go back and forward in time. There's video, there's explosions, the surround sound. It's epic. And that is a great show. Um, and of course, you know, you've got the score of Alan Silvestri and uh, the pop songs of Glenn Ballard. You know, Glenn Ballard wrote Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror, for example. You know, that's how famous he is. Alan Silvestri, um, Alan Silvestri just did the um, orchestral score for the um, Marvel Avengers Endgame movie. So, you know, these are real serious guys. But interestingly, the um, show on Broadway that I uh, enjoy the most um, links back to Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror, and that's the MJ musical. Um, and that is a, that's a musical about Michael Jackson. So of course it has all Michael Jackson's music. And if there's better music anywhere ever than Michael Jackson's music, I'm not sure what it is. And as a sound engineer and as a sound designer, getting to, getting to mix and create that music is pretty incredible. You you also work as sound designer in the Diana the musical in Broadway. That is correct. Diana the musical is a musical about the life and story of Princess Diana. That's correct, and it was it has music written by David Bryan, who is the keyboard player of Bon Jovi, and. I used to work in my rock and roll days. I used to work with Bon Jovi. Um, and that was how I ended up working with David on another musical that he wrote called Memphis, which played on Broadway and in the West End. And was the story about the birth of rock and roll. It was about a DJ who put rock and roll on the radio for the first time. And it was a great musical and we all had really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed working with David. So when he um, came to me and said, hey, we're doing a musical about Diana, um, I, was, uh, I was pretty quick to jump on that. And of course, John, as you may know, the um, Diana musical was actually filmed. So you can see it on Netflix, I think. I think your listeners can find it on Netflix, uh, Netflix to watch, which is pretty cool. Yes, I know. Diana the Musical is on Netflix, yes. And the next question is, what is your favorite musicals? Favorite. Do you want musical, my favorite musicals that I've worked on or my favorite musicals full, full stop? Favorite musical, not work, only favorite musical that you like. Well, well look, I mean, come on. Much as I don't want to jump on the Hamilton bandwagon and there and pick Hamilton because you know that's what everybody says, the Hamilton musical is really, really, really impressive. Yes. And uh, it, it is I really love very that musical. I, I uh, really love Hamilton. I, yeah, I, I think I'd be hard pushed to. I think Miss Saigon is a great musical. Yes. I think. Um, I think Wicked is a great musical. I mean, I'm kind of naming the you know the the big big shows here but I mean I, I think almost everything Andrew Lloyd Webber's ever done is pretty impressive it's got to be said um, I mean Andrew Lloyd Webber's back catalogue I love Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat I love Jesus Christ Superstar um, Aspects of Love actually has some, one of them some of the most haunting music in it um, you know I could listen to that for days um, Starlight Express is actually not one of my favorite musicals but that's a show that uh, that that we do um and you know again you look at that and you you look at andrew and you think this is a man who wrote starlight express but also wrote phantom of the opera i mean you know the guy's an absolute genius and uh so yeah i just generally pretty much generally like everything andrew Weber does um what else have i seen recently begrudgingly i have to say because I was offered it and turned it down. I actually think the music for Six is really good as well. Um, I, I I was offered it and I turned it down because I didn't think it would be very good. And uh, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, regretting that one. And and here is the last question because we have no time. What is your 
advice to people that want to become a sound designer like you? Can you give them a little advice? I can give some advice. I think that all well, all I can do is say is give the advice that worked for me. And what worked for me was when I first started out, I didn't go the traditional depping route. I just basically approached everyone and anyone and asked if I could do work experience. And I ended up doing work experience with a big rock and roll sound company. And I just took everything and anything they asked. Anything they wanted me to do, I just said yes to it. And I think the best advice I can give is that you have to get out there. You have to get in the room with people. I mean, let's quote Hamilton here. You've got to be in the room where it happens. And you have to just say yes. And you have to be somebody that people want to be in the same room with. Because as I, as I said earlier in this interview, you spend a lot of time sitting on your own in a dark room, bored. And as a result of that, the people that you sit there with are really, really important. And you want to enjoy the company of those people that you sit with. And if you don't enjoy their company, well, yeah, it's not going to be a lot of fun. So I think, you know, obviously you have to be extreme. You have to be as good as you can possibly be at your job, but you also have to be a really nice person that people enjoy hanging out with. And you just have to say yes. You know, somebody comes along and says, hey, do you want to do this? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And just go and get on with it and just do your best. Get out there, meet people and uh, and make yourself into somebody that other people want to be want to be in the same room with. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett, for guesting to my podcast. And it is now time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for inviting me on, John. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all your listeners. And and that is our guest, David Owen. And thank you for listening to my podcast. And and see you next time. Bye.